AutoBodyandPaint.com coming to you live. Let's see if the stream looks like it's live. It usually takes a couple of minutes for me to confirm that everything is going okay. That's why it starts out slow like this, you guys. I'm sure you guys know the uh, the drill here for most of you guys. Okay, I finally got myself on live here. I see myself now quickly. Let me know, guys, if the audio is good. If the video is good and just give me some feedback here um, also for all of you guys on the call just type in quickly where you're from right let me know if this is your first time second third tenth time watching in and give a shout out on where you're you're calling in from and um, I will put some names in I'll do some shout outs hit you guys up and just so we know everything's okay here okay so I got, <clears throat> I got Mr. Gustavo says, what's up, Jose? What's up, Jose? Craig, what's going on, Craig? Eric Pierce, what's going on, Eric? Jose again. Jose saying he wants to get the first copy of my book when it comes out and have it autographed. That's awesome, brother. No problem. We got Armando Guzman. We got Dennis Reed. What's going on? Dennis in the house, VIP member, third time. Beltsville, Maryland, East Costa in the house. USA misses me. <laughs> That's awesome. Dennis, thank you for that long email you sent in last week. I got it. I read it. I printed it. Thank you so much. Um, it just gives me more inspiration to keep doing what I do for you guys. Um, let's see. We got Richard from Iowa. We got Bruce, Harvey, all good. Audio's fine. Sergio, what's up? California, first time. Charlie, new Ohio. Oh, Charlie, what is NW Ohio? I don't know. Maybe that's an area. Uh, all is good. Audio's good. Eric, VIP member, I know you. <laughs> Dennis, you're welcome. What's up? Justin in the house. What's going on, Justin? We got Gaslo, Scotland, first time. What time is that out there in Scotland? That's awesome. We got Driveway Auto Body, first time catching a live show. Just bought the course today. What's going on? Awesome. You guys came in at the sale. Some of you guys came in at the special sale we're doing. It's ending in about two, two or three hours. Uh, let's see, 2 a.m., oh my God, I better put on, I better put on a good show, this guy's up at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Northwest, <laughs> got it, got it, got it, Northwest Ohio, all right, see, I'm so stupid, man, I'm like a college dropout, high school dropout, I don't know these simple things, I thought, I thought he meant to put new, like N-E-W, new from Ohio, that's what I thought, like new, new viewer from Ohio, that's what I thought, I, to me, it just didn't come off as Northwest, all right, so, um, I'm in Japan, for all of you auto body guys on here, I was doing the buy and sell live cast last night, um, and I updated you guys on what the story was, why I'm here, um, I'm all the way in Japan right now, for you guys that don't know, uh, I flew in two nights ago, um, and uh, my daughter, she had pneumonia. She's in the hospital for a week here. I have family here in Japan, so I fi she finally got uh, released this morning. So we got out at like 9 o'clock, literally an hour ago. So we came home. The, the hospital is like walking distance from the house, 10 minutes. So we just walked home. I had a whole bunch of crap, and then uh, I told her, get out of here because I got to do this live cast, you know, keep quiet. So she's at uh, her grand great-grandfather's place right now downstairs and she is um basically hanging out while i am basically gonna be on here with you tonight so how many of you guys want to quickly see where i'm at right here uh in in japan i'll show you my little place it's super messy by the way and this is one of our rooms hey what's up troy what's up tony don't worry i'll get to you guys at least you started college, Tony. South Texas, second time. Robert Garza. Okay, so uh, I'll show you my place really quickly and we'll get started here tonight, okay, guys? Some of you auto body guys haven't seen it. And for all you brand new VIP members who joined us within the past couple of days, we're doing a VIP sale. Congratulations. Thank you, Eric's. Congratulations for getting on. 
um, and, and joining us in VIP. Uh, and I think you're going to get more out of VIP because you're going to be going through my system. You're going to be going through the course, right? And you are going to be on our live show here. So you're going to be able to, you're going to be on the same page as us. So you're going to be going through the trainings. You're going to know what I'm talking about. And it's going to help you out when we get on here live with the Q&A. Because you're going to get more out of it because you are a VIP member, of course. So here's my place. It's kind of messy. We got a little couch over there, stuff all over. We got TV, clothes rack, uh, bed for the kid, bed for me right over here. Little table where I got my setup right here really quickly. Microwave, some baby stuff. Hallway with the with a closet in the hallway with a bathroom, but back in there, kitchen, uh, with a stove, gas stove, and everything's kitchen in there. All the way in the back is a shower, washing machine, little bathroom in the back, closet, and that's it. It's like a one. It's a little studio, like a one bedroom studio. Um, we do have a place next door, and that's kind of like a living room area, and we I have an office. Um, next to that so we basically have the third floor of this building here but it's not connected so we got to go out of the, the house go into the next room and then I have an office that I haven't really set up yet um, that's I'll set that up the next time I come back to Japan it's just pretty busy here I'm gonna be here for about three weeks and we're going back to Texas I have another project I want to be doing with my godfather he backed into a mailbox messed up his his, his brand new Subaru Outback um, just, you know, messed it up by the tail lights. So we're going to be doing step by step on that quick and easy fix, how you could bang out a spot repair. You guys excited to see that that's going to be fully documented, uploaded inside VIP as well. And quickly, I'll just show you what outside looks like w these windows got to be cleaned, but that's, you can see the building I'm in outside. Uh, you can see what it looks like. Kind of, you know, I don't want to open, I got the AC on now, so I really don't want to open the windows, uh, cause it's nice and cool. But um, it's supposed to be raining today. So it hasn't rained yet, but it's supposed to be raining today. So awesome, awesome, awesome. So driveway auto body, what's your name, by the way? What, what is your real name? Um, Japan culture. Oh, dude, guys, I don't know. Japan culture is freaking amazing. Like, you guys probably don't know, but I'm half Japanese. My mom's, my mom's from Okinawa. So I grew up speaking Japanese. I can speak Japanese fluently, right? So my wife is Japanese. I met her in Hawaii when I was living in Hawaii uh, 10 years ago. And uh, we got married. We got two kids. So my wife's Japanese and she has family here in Japan. So I feel really connected with the Japanese culture. I think it's amazing. Um, the food is ridiculous. If you guys like sushi, if you guys like that kind of stuff, I'm going to show you a quick picture really quickly because I just have to show it to you. I had lunch yesterday at this sushi place and it was freaking amazing. 15 bucks and I also took a video of it. But you get like awesome freaking sushi like this. I don't know if you guys eat this stuff. But let me see if you guys can see this. Uh, amazing sushi. It was 15 bucks. But like the freshest sushi ever. I don't know if you could see that. I know the. Okay. And then I also took video. Like I got video of myself. Like we're, we're in the sushi place. We're eating. And it's like it's super amazing. I don't know if you guys see that. But like that was like the best lunch. Like I flew in the night before. We had some amazing sushi. And today after lunch. After we do this webcast here today with you guys. I'm actually going to go eat some ramen. Like there's a badass ramen place around the corner here. And it's like, dude, it's to die for. So like I'm taking pictures of that. And um, I think you guys are going to like that. Anyway, let's, let's get to a quick 10-minute session. And then we will do some Q&A for you guys. Dennis Reed, um, I will get to you. Yes, I backed my daughter's 2016 Honda Odyssey to a phone pole. <laughs> you really screwed up. Say, say, you really screwed up in Japanese. Kuruma wa honto ni butsuketa zo. That means you really smashed up my car in Japanese. <laughs> All right. John Ryan Ro Rojas from Philippines, newbie here. 
Nick, what's going on, Nick? Tony, nice. Okay. From Sydney, Australia, second time. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Let's say that again. All right. Forget Forget the Japanese lessons right now. Okay. Kuruma honto ni butsuketa zo. Means, man, you really smashed up my car. <laughs> okay. So this, I just want to cover, you know, I got the title here. What does it take to paint the car yourself? I just want to cover for all the newbies getting on here. Um, any newbies, anybody first time watching this show here today, just type in first time. I just want to get a feel for it. First timers, first time people, just put first time just so I get an idea. Uh, so what does it take to paint the car yourself? Now, the first thing is it takes, it takes a little bit of, I guess you would call it courage. You need a little bit of courage. Okay. A lot of first timers. You need to think that you could do it. You need to not be afraid of getting dirty, right? Because you're going to get a little bit dusty, right? So if you like working with your hands, I, I, I would assume everybody on, on here today, all 57 of you like working with your hands, right? Or else you wouldn't be on here, right? So you're going to get a little dusty. You're going to get a little bondo on your hand. Your fingers are going to start to smoothen out a little because you're using your sanding, right? You're going to sand your skin down. Like me, when I was sanding the other day, I had to put a Band-Aid around my, uh, my knuckle here because when I was wet sanding with 400, it was sanding my skin down and started to bleed. And that happens, you know? That happens when you're doing auto body, right? Um, so you have to have a little space to work, you know? I know some people, they work outside on the street, you know, these hardcore guys, um, what's up, Greg? Congratulations. VIP here. What's going on? Congratulations. Um, and you need to have a little bit of tools. The common question people get me, ask is, Tony, how much tools do I need to get started? You know, what do I really need? How much is it going to cost me to get started? Well, number one, <clears throat> New York, first time, Mr. Matt Dunn. You need an air compressor, right? It would be nice to have an air compressor. <laughs> Because you need some air, right, to paint with. And if you don't, if you can't get a 60 gallon big compressor, a 30 gallon is enough. You can get them secondhand, used off of Craigslist for 100 or 200 bucks. All right. You need a spray gun, so a compressor and a spray gun is given. And I wouldn't go cheap. I wouldn't go buying those 20, 30 dollar, 40 dollar, 50 dollar spray guns. I would invest in a mid grade something medium grade where it's going to last you, where it's not a piece of crap, where you're getting a good atomization, right? High volume, low pressure is what you really want. Uh, you could go with a low volume, low pressure if you have a small compressor, okay? It's basically the same thing, just a different air nozzle cap on your spray gun, just a different cap. And we sell both versions if you want to look into the Warwick's. I recommend the Warwick spray guns because they are high quality made. Uh, they're affordable. They're made in Taiwan, but they are absolutely great quality spray guns. It's all we use at LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Think about the Apple computer. I'm on an Apple computer now. It says designed in California, but made in China. All right, so China doesn't put out bad products. Taiwan doesn't put out bad products. It's just what quality are you getting? All right, there's a grade. There's a grade of quality that you're getting. You can get the low-grade Chinese or you can get the high grade Chinese. You guys are getting, you know, iPhones are made in China, right? You guys know that. So invest in a medium turbine. I've had some VIP members use turbine, but I've also had VIP members say they moved from turbine to getting a real spray gun, spray gun that's, you know, you use air and they say, oh my God, what a difference. So Orlando in the house, okay? Just got the 903G and an Iwata Supernova. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like the 903G um, because it has the little swivel cup on top and you could do touch-ups and it's really cool little gun. Um, check that out at the shop later if you guys want to. Right here. Um, you know what? I got to keep these links a little on the side on a notepad here so you guys can actually so I can get them to you a little easier but uh yeah so that's you know and tools as far as tools what do you need with tools I would say you need 
you know, it would be nice to have a little hammer and dolly set, you know, a little body hammer dolly set, 20, 30 bucks, so you could pound some dents out, put your little flat iron on the back of a panel if you have to, and beat it down, get it nice and, you know, leveled out so you can do your, your filler on top of that. So a little hammer set. Um, if you have 150, pick up a stud gun, right? So you can weld. If you can't get to the back of a panel, you could weld some studs in your panel, pull it out. A grinder, you can pick up a nice grinder for 50 bucks, okay? A little grinder, 50 bucks, stud gun, spray gun. You know, I would say for 500 to 1,000, you could have everything you need. And you know, you don't have to go crazy and get all these tools to begin with. You add little by little as you as you do a job or as, you know, I used to always upgrade tools. Like I used to do, a, I did a customer job once and I, I needed a brand new straight sander, right? So I bought myself, I just put it on my customer's bill, right? I needed that tool for the job. So I, I estimated a job. I added some costs in there so I could buy a tool for myself. And it's I've been using it for 15 years now, you know, 13 years now. Straight That Hustler straight line says 240 bucks. I was doing a big job for a customer. I charged them 2,600 bucks, okay? It was a while ago. And I, I added the freaking part the, you know the tool to it so I could complete the job and that's how you save and you build up your tools little by little all right you don't need a DA to get started you could basically use 80 grit sandpaper on a flat block to do most of your body work you know body work can all be done by hand you don't need fancy tools tools is to basically speed up the process and make your life easier that's what tools are for right with the right tools things you can get things done quicker and easier right? That's what, why you have tools, just like tools online, software programs, same exact thing, okay? Um, what does it take? It takes, if you don't need a spray boot, that's the other thing. You know, a friend of mine from New York, he loves cars. He's like, Tony, I, I want to get into this. He's like, but don't I need a spray booth? Don't I need uh, uh, to bake my paint on, right? When, when I paint the car, doesn't it have to be baked? Well, that's all for uh, basically the, uh, the industrial line, you know, when you're, when you're banging out, when you're making a hundred cars a day or 200 cars a day, 300 cars a day at a factory, you need to, they need to put the paint on, dry it quick, get it out the door to assembly and get everything going. That's why they have these bakers. But with the paints nowadays, uh, with what you get, it's dry to the touch in two, two hours. Uh, the next day you could put water on it. You're fine. All right. So you don't need to, to, to go crazy with, heaters and a spray booth you don't need that as long as you have a little bit of ventilation you got to air you're blowing out the overspray you're going to be okay all right i have videos in the auto body course in vip where we do a single stage enamel paint job underneath a tent outside and it came out amazing okay uh you it helps to have friendly neighbors you know i've painted cars in subdivisions at my friend's house uh he's like dude he's like screw it we had like fog going down the street and he was like, dude, don't worry about it. Just paint my car. Like he did all the body work. And I was about like 25 at the time. He's like, come to my house and paint my Nissan 240. He was building a drift car, right? And exactly. Driveway says, I do my painting when they're not home. So just close up your garage, you know, have a fan blowing out. Touch ups, no big deal. Full paint job. You're going to get a little bit more overspray, but, uh, Hey, you get it done, right? You work with what you got. That's the freaking main idea, right? Don't get hung up on, oh, I don't have a spray booth, or I don't have no place to work on a car, or this, that, this, that. You can make so many excuses. You work with what you got, and you use that as a stepping stone to get to the next level, right? Maybe you're starting out in your mom's garage, or that's how I started, right? You're starting out, and you know, and then you just get there and you just take things to the next level. You start making some money, build up your income, build up, you know, your, your level. And then, and then you just build up your confidence and you start getting to the next level. Is it making sense, guys? That's all you really need to get started. You can do it. It's nothing. It's not rocket science. Doing auto body and painting is not rocket science. You just need a little space to work on a car, a little one parking stall, right? You learn what you got to do. You get it done. You prime it, sand it, prep it for paint and freaking paint it. If a bug goes in it, that's why I grow my pinky nails. You know, I get a lot of stupid people on YouTube saying, oh, you know, they notice my pinky nails on 
on the videos. And they're like, they call it a crack nail. You know, they call it like a lot of people call it the crack nail. Like I freaking snort crack with it. I've never done crack in my life. Right. I'm not a druggie. Right. But the, I use this. These pinky nails are my tools for auto body. And I got it from my dad. When you're doing masking around certain edges and it, it helps push the tape in. Right. When, when a bug flies in your paint for some reason or you got a piece of dust, I go like this and I pick it out. Because like where the hell are you going to have a tweezer laying around? Right. You could have a tweezer. But I use this and I just go like this and I just pull the pull the bug out. You know what I mean? That's what I do. That's why I have my pinky nails. And I used to grow them a little longer, but I kind of cut them down a little bit. But they come in handy. Absolutely. Right? You could even pick your nose with it if you want to. But yeah, there's a lot of idiots on YouTube, man. Oh, look at his crack nail. I mean, what are you freaking... That's where, that's where their mind is. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I've also had a bunch of VIP members actually start growing their pinky nails because of that you know they're like oh that's a great idea tony let me start and it really comes in handy i would say it comes in handy more for masking than taking stuff out of a paint job uh, i had to do it with the bmw I, I had two i had two uh two little gnats fly in it so i had to pick them out with my pinkies but more likely when masking comes in really handy so junior says i use it to pick my nose <laughs> what's up tony Mondo357 in the house. Sam says, absolutely. Patrick says, been there. Got to have the pinkies. Good, good to scratch your ass. <laughs> good to scratch your balls, too. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. All right. So that's all I wanted to get out, you know, because people always ask me, what does it take? You know, do you need a lot of tools? Do you need a lot? You know, that's all you really need. Simple shit. You can get started with 500 bucks, literally, uh, with, with some of the tools you need and a paint material. And once you build up on all the tools that you have, you have them for future jobs, right? So you can always use them. Hate when I find the previous day, 10, 20 carport. Uh, hate when I find the previous day in a steering, snot on, snot on the steering wheel. <laughs> all right. So let's get to some Q&A. All right. You guys ready for some Q&A? We'll do some Q&A. Let me help you guys out here, uh, give you some advice, and we will uh, wrap it up for tonight. we got 76 people on the line. Pretty good. And again, I want to say thank you for all of you brand new VIP members for joining. I think you guys are going to get a lot out of the program. I'm really excited to see that you came through. Uh, you, you, you know, basically invested in yourself. Uh, maybe you took some of the special offers that I had in back of it. Maybe not. No big deal. Um, but let's go ahead. Eric says, uh, I started with 80 grit to remove and depending on where the process you want to smooth out, work with 400 grit before painting. Uh, okay. So he's basically talking to somebody else there. Um, we got rubbing down a panel I painted last week, tomorrow, last week, tomorrow. There's a bit of orange peel. So 500 should be okay. So if you're rubbing out to color sand and buff, 500 is a little too coarse, right? I would, if you want to speed the process up, go with 1200 grit, 1200, water sand it, get it nice and smooth, and then move down to 2000, and then you could buff over 2000. Some people want to go to 25, but I think it's overkill, but you could go to 2500 grit if you want, but 500 is way, way too coarse, way too coarse to, to do any rubbing and, and for, for buffing, way too coarse. You want to go with 1,200 grit. I, I even think 1,000 is a little too much. Uh, 1,200 grit to cut it flat. And then once it's cut flat, like, like glass, right? You got the orange peel out. Then you go to 1,500, 2,000 grit. Ideally, 2,000 grit. Get it nice and, uh, and do your buffing on top of that. All right? Uh, what do you think of the old style dent pullers where you drill a hole in the dent, insert a screw and, uh, you know, I think if that's all you have, use it, right? You could drill a hole, uh, and it comes with a screw. You could screw it in and pull it out. I think sometimes those make more of a mess. And what I mean by more of a mess is that you put, you start putting holes all over your body panels, right? And sometimes when you pull out, it, it just slips out and you got all this ugly metal. 
you know, so if that's all you have to work with, use it. Um, it's, you know, I, I would, you know, if you could save up 150 bucks and get a, a, a welder style, do that. But for now, if that's all you got, hey, I've used them, you know, I've used them. So I can't really tell you, no, it's not good, don't use them. That's all you got, use it. Um, and then if you could move up to the newer style stud guns and get one of those. Okay, um, let's see. New VIP member, why are some of the courses locked? Well, it's a drip style. There's tons of content in there. You got access to a lot of material. So as you go on with the VIP course, more new sections are going to be unlocked. Okay, that's the way the course is. And uh, don't worry about it. You're going to get access to them. Okay. Any tips for doing complete color change on a car? Uh, yeah, plenty of tips. Carlos, are you a VIP, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Because I cover I cover everything you need to know about color changing in the VIP. So if you if you are VIP, then check out the RAV4 series because that's a color change paint job. Uh, but basically, any tips, pull off all of your weather strips color change. Most likely, what the fuck is going on? Our stream just cut out for a second. Excuse it. I don't know why, but it looks like we're okay. Looks like we're okay. Um, I'll just wait for it to get back on. Um, so changing for complete, uh, tips for color change. Um, you're probably going to be doing door jams and under the hood. So number one thing, before you get started, you want to degrease your car, like get some degreaser, do under your hood, wash, take all the grease off in the door jams under your hood. Because you're going to be sanding all that area, right? You're going to be sanding with 400 grit. And you're going to be prepping it for paint. Take off all of your weather stripping, right? So when you paint, you could just mask up the door. You paint it and then you put your weather stripping on. It's going to look nice, right? Not that you're taping up your weather stripping. I would pull your weather stripping off the doors. Okay, take all the rubber off of when you open your door uh, inside. You know, try to take away all the, the, the rubber moldings and stuff and then sand it and paint it. So basically, you know, color change, you wanna do your door jam. So when you open up the doors, it looks great. And now another step up on that is you could do a two time. There's, there's three ways to doing a color change. You could prep and paint the door jams one day, right? And then mask it off and do the outside, okay? You could do the outside first and then do your door jams, or you could do everything at one shot. Okay, I like to basically do my door jams first, let that dry, shut the doors, make sure it's masked so you don't get over spray inside, and then do the body the next day. Or the other way I like to do it is do everything at once. So have everything masked up. You could open your doors, hit the door jams, close your doors, but don't shut them all the way, right? Because you might get masking paper or stuck to, to the inside area, right? And then just close your door and then do, do your paint job. So you could do two ways. I like two ways. Do the door jams under the hood, in the trunk one day. Get all that done, right? Let that dry. Mask it. Roll your tape or use the special uh, door jam tape that they have. It's, it's like, a, like a sponge, a, a circle sponge. So your overspray doesn't go inside and fog everything up, right? And then you do your body. Or you could do everything in one shot. I've done them both ways, um, and it depends. You know, it depends on if you want to put the extra work in and do everything at one day. Do that. It's going to take a little longer because you're doing your clear coat, your base coat, all that. So that's uh, that's my tips on that. Um, okay. Driveway auto body. There's a lot of content in the course. A ton of content. Okay. So over the next year, you're going to be getting a lot of content. Plus, the, the new series is going to be uploaded uh, very shortly. Have you had any luck using the PDR dent pullers? Uh, you know, I'm not a huge PDR guy. Uh, that in itself is its own specialized skill. I haven't put in a lot of hours and time with that. Um, so, you know, I haven't really... I haven't really got into that. I should, and I, and I do plan to partner with somebody and put some cool PDR videos uh, in the back end of VIP as well. 
Does anyone know how I can find the cheap gun in Sydney? The few I saw on eBay are on 600. Oh my God, Sam. Have you checked uh, Amazon, Sam Smith? Check on Amazon. If not, dude, I could probably get you one and mail it to you to be dot cheaper. Um, John says, how hard is it to repaint a newer BMW to factory finish? Matching the paint to exact color and and where someone buy the base and clear. Uh, basically, what's going on? Okay. I'll be up in a little bit. All right. Uh, well, in your local area, they have auto body stores. And you just go to your auto body supply house. You find out where all the auto body shops buy their paint from. And you can order your paint there. And usually they like to basically color, they color match for you. Like I just did my BMW, uh, the, the Z3 project. And I took a piece of the part to the girl. She color matched it for me exactly. And it came out super, super nice. And I was able to color match. It came out really, really nice. Uh, the hot glue pullers work great as well. So check out the hot glue pu pullers. And you make sure if you're doing the hot glue gun style, you want to do it on a shiny surface, shiny clean surface. You don't want to sand it because it's not going to stick as well. Uh, what's, a, what's a good, John says, what's a good ratio of mixing paint, primer, and top coat? You know, there's no good ratio. It's, it's what, what paint you're using and what's the mixing specifications. What's, it they, tells you on the back of the can. Uh, 90, 99% of the time, base coat is 50-50. So you got one-to-one -one mixture. So if you have a, a quart of base, it's going to be a quart of reducer to mix it up. Thank you, Tony. Can't wait to start the course after the live show. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Harbor Freight has a stud gun for 110 bucks. Mine is six years old and still works. That's awesome. Uh, must have gotten lucky. Harbor Freight studs wouldn't stick to my Impala door. <laughs> My Harbor Freight, yeah, Harbor Freight is another affordable tool company that you can get your tools from. Um, I've got some stuff from there, but not a lot. Dennis Reed says, are Scotch Bright pads good for scuffing? Should I use 400 only? Seems the pads would be good on door jams. Yes. No, Scotch Bright are great. Scotch Bright pads are great for doing door jams because they're a little softer. I totally forgot. I skipped that. Yes, you could use that. Make sure you use the fine ones, though. You don't want to get something too coarse where it's going to scratch it up, right? Use an old one, something that you've been using, uh, or get a, a fine Scotch-Brite pad, but they are good. That red BMW paint is a factory color. Yes, absolutely. 100% Fa factory. I'm keeping it original. Uh, let's see. Can you, can you paint base coat over old lacquer? Yes, you can. You can. But you just got to make sure your lacquer is prepped up and sanded really well. Okay? Yeah. Don says the gray ones are fine. Make sure. Yep, absolutely. Okay? Any other questions, guys? <clears throat> Any other technical questions? <clears throat> My feed cut out, so I don't know if you answered the question regarding needing more clear. Local shop line JC67, does it have dye back or yellow tint? Thanks. Patrick, uh, the shop line JC67 is a pretty good clear coat. It has a little dye back. Not, too, not yellow tint. I haven't noticed any yellow tint with the shop lines. Um, the dieback, you know, that's pretty common for all clears. You're going to get a little bit of dieback. But I've noticed with the House of Color clear coats that I've been using, very, very minimal dieback, maybe 10%, hardly noticeable. But if you're going to be doing a custom spray job anyway, most of the time you're going to be color sanding and buffing. And even if you had the shittiest clear, the cheapest, shittiest clear, and you color sand and buffed it to a pro gloss, you pro you, most times you can't even tell the difference between that and a high end clear side to side buffed out. Over time, you may notice a tint difference, right, with the tint, but gloss wise, you won't notice it. So that's how you can basically make a, a cheaper clear look like an expensive clear is after you do it, the job, 
you basically color sand and buff it to a pro gloss. And I show you exactly how to do that. Um, Tony, can you use, let's see, John says, Tony, can you use the same body for high volume, low pressure and low volume, low pressure just by different spray caps? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Um, some spray gun manufacturers don't make the different spray caps for it, but the Warwicks that we sell to shop, we do sell the uh, the cap. Okay, so you could actually you could actually do that. You could actually get the cap. Um, check that out there at the shop. I don't know why the link is like that. Ah, oh, I know why. Okay, well we will get to your Q and A in just a bit. HTTP P, here we go. This should be better. That should be a good link. Dude, what the hell is going on? <laughs> My eyes are a little bugged out today. That should be a good link, guys. Okay. Um, Let's see. Andy here from Renfrew, Renfrew, Ontario, Canada. Hi, everyone. Hello, honey. Tony, let the air out of tires. That will give you a few inches. Absolutely, you could take the air out of tires, drop the car done, down. I've done that on trucks. You know, sometimes you're painting trucks. You let the air out of tires, you bring it down. This way, when you're a step stool and you're doing the roof, you got a little bit more clearance. Great idea. Tony, uh, Eric Reed, Dennis Reed says, if a car is flaking clear coat, should we scuff the entire car and spray clear of the existing base coat? No, 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 no. You never want to do that. And I have a YouTube video specifically that talks about that. If you're flaking clear coat, right? I talk about that, Dennis. I talk about that through the Godfather series at the very beginning, okay? Because when you're sanding and when you're, when you're trying to blend out and feather out the clear coat, you are going to cut through to your base coat. Some areas you're going to cut through to metal, right? And you're going through the process anyway. You're going to be prepping the car for paint anyway. You might as well buy a new quart of base coat or half a gallon, whatever area you're painting, and put some fresh base coat on it, put some fresh clear coat on it, and you're going to get a hell of a nice job compared to putting clear coat on old sanded base coat. It's not going to look right. You can't do it like that. Okay, Dennis? Make sure that you're going to be doing, if you're going to be doing that, put a brand new fresh coat of base on there and put your paint on. All right? There's no sense of, you're doing the work anyway. Do it right. Put new base on it. All right? That's my tip. That's a common question as well. And I always say, you're going through the process you might as well put new base on it as well because you're not going to get the job's not going to come out nice if you do it the other way. Uh, Eric, would three inches be far enough from edge of peeling clear coat to do the feathering when going to bare, when going to bare metal above it? Would three inches be far enough from the edge of peeling clear coat to do the feathering when going bare metal above it. Well, you know, when feathering, you just got to feather and whatever you got to do. Sometimes it's going to it's going to get, you know, it's going to large area. The job is to feather it out and then you're going to have to prime it. If you got metal showing, you got to prime it. Okay? Prime it and then basically wet sand it with 400 and you're ready for brand new base coat. Okay? Uh, Tony, I've been on the fence a while for both courses, flipping cars, and I'm going to join. You've already provided a lot of value for free. Thank you, man. Sam Smith, awesome, buddy. Dude, if you are going to join VIP, you better join tonight. It's on sale right now. Um, it's on sale right now, and it's closing down in literally two hours and 20 minutes. Here we go. Oh, shit. I sent it to the wrong wrong link. Here you go. I'll give you the link just in case you decide. Uh, it's the sales closing down in two hours. Um, VIP is worth every penny of the one. For, have gotten more knowledge in one month than 20 years of guessing. Thank you, Dennis. I really appreciate it. Um, Andy says, I'm doing a 54 Fargo. Do I have to send 
all the old paint off before I repaint it. I'm afraid of the reaction between very old paint and new. Um, Andy, if you're doing a, a, a paint job on a car that old, painting base coat over a sanded base, most likely you're not going to get a problem. Okay, you could do it over it. Now, you're not going to get a problem. But if you're going over such an old car and paint job like that, I, to feel comfortable, would like to put a nice 2K filler primer on the whole car. I would. You know, it's a classic. You want to make it come out nice. It's, you know, you want to put a nice foundation on it. I would put a nice 2K primer on it. This way you have a nice foundation. Take your time. Sand it out with a nice 400 grit and then put your new paint on it. That's what I would do. Okay, you don't have to Okay, but I would Um, Thank you Dennis for the support. I appreciate it Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys You hear me? Yo, 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 we are back. I don't know. Yo, are we back? I know we lost a ton of people on, on here. Shit. I am so sorry. I don't know what the hell happened. My Wi-Fi got disconnected and it just had a hard time. It had a hard time. Uh, it had a hard time catching back on. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, email me back. 